Welcome to Warp Curry. <laughs> My name is Gator Patel. And I'm Yogi. And today we have, I think, our, uh, at least for me, the most exciting guests that we've had. And, and, you know, we've only had two, but the other one was a bit of a pain in the ass. But today uh, I'm actually super excited to have uh, our guest on uh, one uh, because she is very dynamic and so before we get too far because we want to talk about all of that uh we're going to bring in vaishali patel hi Hello. hi guys up? How are welcome you? to the podcast thank you so there's a lot to talk about there's a lot to unravel about you um we're going to show some pictures and so i want to go through the first one because i didn't really know about this about you um until you sent all us all these pictures and kind of talked about it. So we'll go through the first one. We're not going to stay on all of them the whole time, but uh, tell us a little bit about this, and then we'll go through more detail about who you are. So I'm going to put the first one up there. <laughs> oh, to be young again. Let, let me ask you a question. You're the first... Oh, female yeah. Indian cop that I know. I don't even know that many guys that are Indian, but you're the first Indian cop that I know female. What made you want to be a cop? Let's start with that. Okay. So as you say that, you, me being the first that you've met, I'm actually the first Indian female law enforcement officer in the state of South Carolina. Um, I haven't, yeah. So I haven't checked the stats. So I don't know if there's any more, but I'm at least the first. I know that much. So I broke that glass ceiling. <laughs> um, so, it's only been five minutes into this. Where yeah, are you I know, right? <laughs> like, we're coming in strong. Um, so my focus in life has been very different. Um, it's been about, like, I'm not a woman trying to just succeed or impress. Not succeed, impress. I'm more of a woman that's into progress, if that makes sense. So, you know, as I mean, that's pretty cut and dry. But so how my journey started was I wrote a letter to my spiritual leader, my guru. Um, and it was kind of the start. It's, it's very interesting. So he actually wrote back and stated, let's become a professor in religion. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't like studying. I'm one of those, like, I don't like math. I don't like science, like the typical, I, I, I hate studying. I'm more hands-on, more of a, more of the technical mind. Um, but so I did that, right? And then the first year of college, um, so I we my parents had already moved us back to South Carolina from New Jersey. So Rutgers back then had this program where out of state, I guess, college students were paired up with someone that's in state kind of in there. So I was paired up with someone. Um, long story short, um, I became a victim to rape. Um, and, you know, that kind of, there's, there's a couple ways that, you know, people or victims kind of go about this journey or what to do after, right? Some, some, you know, just depression full on, um, some go the complete opposite way and, you know, are working the streets in a different map, essentially. I actually took the route of working the streets in a different definition. So that, so that whole experience, that all that trauma kind of led me to, um, joining law enforcement because I, I wanted to do something for someone who, whether they were a victim or, you know, be proactive. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be that victim's advocate. And so again, wrote a letter and kind of explained all of this. And this time he said, okay, you know what? The goal now is we're going to retire as a director in the FBI. I was like, okay, fair. I was not thinking that far. And I never write a letter I'm not asking for blessings. I'm asking for the road, right? Direction, I'm not asking, yeah. you know, that this is what I want to do. Can, you know, what do you think? It's more of what am I doing kind of a sense. And so, um, so yeah, that, you know, that kind of started the journey, of uh, you know, becoming the cop. And then the funny thing is I met my husband who was already in the air force. 
Um, he was a pararescue jumper, did a couple missions and then, or training, and he had some medical issues. So then they recycled him to public. So anyway, so I met him. Um, he was stationed in Mississippi. And once we got, so we got legally married, we actually didn't have our ceremony. We just kind of moved in together. Um, I applied to become a, they're technically called blueberries, but um, it's a federal law enforcement officer with the Department of Defense supporting the Air Force. And so this is, this is uh, before you joined the police force or this is after? Before. So this is after. So, so this is my. So I'm moving on to my second segment. Of, so with your first one. So so I just want to stop and dissect yeah. the kind of first one, right? So what what happens from college, like year one religious studies, right? Mm -hmm. Terrible experience yeah. happens. Yeah. You decide to change your path. You get guidance to do that, right? How does your college path change? Like, did you change your major to support yes. this? Yes. So I changed my major to criminal justice. Okay. Um, continue doing that. I actually transferred out, uh, moved back home, back South Carolina. Um, and yeah, I just kind of went to college there, fulfilled whatever I needed to. Went to police academy. Um, that was interesting. And I have a feeling we'll kind of get into it a little bit later um, with faith and how the accommodation. So that, that was a good experience. Um, it was a struggle. I have to say, I had never it, held a gun. Go and ahead. it is super competitive, right? Because um, I know, like, it might vary from state to state, but I know there's a lot of competition in getting into either the police force or the state police. So not in South Carolina, actually. Okay. And not being a, mi a super minority. Yeah. Right? right. Um. So we lived in Bamberg, and that's actually where Nikki Haley is from um and so it was i got hired on by the agency first and then they're from they are the ones that send you to academy i know like a lot of places you have to go first and then get right. hired on this is the complete opposite so um yeah so i went through uh did all that it was actually a funny story so when i first did the application as far as your race went there wasn't it was just white or black Wow. And so I got asked, I was like, well, I asked, I was like, <laughs> what do I, what do I fill out? And she's like, well, what is it that you most I, can I, relate to? And I'm I like, I, I, ask. <laughs> I was like, what do you um, mostly feel yourself to be? <laughs> like, I'm like, does it matter of the day? Like what, or the time, you know? And so I just filled out both. I was like, mm, whatever. And if you combine them, maybe, you know, yeah. if you combine them, make brown, right? So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so that that was actually uh, I'll never forget that. But um, so yeah, that happened, and then I moved on to federal. Right, I kind of worked my way up, and I was like, I I need to make the big leap. I'm not I'm not trying to catch the little you know the the, the little opportunities. Let's go for the big hitter. So I did, um, and then I did that for about a couple of years. Everything kind of added up to about six years in law for six to eight years give or take oh, wow. um and then 2017 uh bart went ahead and deployed and i was like okay now what right because i'm <laughs> i'm in mississippi now what so before he left he said something very important he's like hey the the blessings were the bureau right this is very competitive, right? Being a civilian, I have an idea. And I sometimes want to kick him in the shins, like, why did you make me really do this? It's like, was it the money? Because I think you made more money off of me joining versus not. But anyway, so he's like, why don't you go to join the military? That's one more thing under your belt. And I was like, okay, yeah, why not, right? So I did that. Um, I went to basic training. He was deployed. Um, him and my sister actually planned my entire wedding. So I just had to show up. It was great. Like my wedding outfit, invitations, everything was done. And I was like, all right, cool. And this is um, while you were training? Mm-hmm. So, okay. Because so here's the thing. So Barth was still deployed, right? Um, you, your basic, whatever today's day and age of basic 
technology is taken away from you. You don't have your phone. Mm -hmm. You don't have, you don't have access to a computer. You write letters like, and, um, I, so you get one call the, the, the day you get there and you don't even technically exist yet. You don't even have uniforms or boots. Mm -hmm. It's, you're pretty much, it's called zero week for what you are worth. Nothing at that point. Right. Um, so I remember, so you get one call and it's pretty much, it's scripted and you're, so they're called military training instructor instructors or MTIs. They stand in front of you you get one call and it's literally 45 seconds and it's pretty much saying, Hey, I made it safe. I'm alive. Bye. <laughs> and is it That's an undisclosed it. location or where'd you go? Well, I, so I was at San Antonio, Texas. Okay. That's Your where family they, they knows. Military. They know that. Yeah, they're so there? No. Pretty much. So my first call was far. I was like, all right, I don't care whether you pick up or not. I'm calling you. Yeah, he didn't pick up. And I was so emotional because it was just that feeling, right? They're standing in front of you. They're screaming at you like, hurry up. Let's go. You don't have much time. And my mom, so then afterwards, you know, the second, so they gave me another call and it was to my mom. And I couldn't remember her number, even though I had it written down. It was just so much anxiety. But um I called her and she's asking questions as, you know, aren't they seeing moms? You got to love them. She's like, oh, did you eat the kadu? Would you like, and I'm like, I don't have time. Bye. Right? So that was a whole thing. So, um, so that kind of sets off the mood of BMT. Eight weeks. Um, I was older when I started, I was 27. So all the girls were like 17, 18, like they were a decade younger than me. So it was a lot of different mindsets. Um, so the whole structure of basic training is pretty much to break you down and then mold you back up the way they need you to be. So. And is this, is this different from air force versus military versus Navy, or is this all, is it very similar in this initial breakdown builds you back up? So I'm going to make fun of the air force, even though I like, bleed blue technically we're called chair force for a reason like our basic training is the absolute easiest because here's the main thing air force is all it's air force right we are not boots on ground until we need to be it's we're like the last possible and before us like the drones go right yeah yeah. fighters you know so we're sitting around (laughs) pretty much right like we're we're they we okay so even standard of living between each branch is very different. Like our homes are pretty like up there, like even just the way they're built versus the army, even though we are the army stepchild technically. Right. right. So, so anyway, so go ahead. Is this a part of your basic training? No. So this is technical school actually. So after basic training based on the job that you have, you go to another base and train on your job. So what was your technical? So mine focus? was um, a maintenance maintenance management analyst. Okay. So we don't, we're maintainers, but we don't touch the plane at all. Um, we're doing more of the preventative stuff and we brief to Congress on a monthly basis or commanders on a monthly basis to say, Hey, this is where we're messing up. This is where your people. I think one of you had a motorcycle drive by. My, yeah, that was Barth. Oh, is- <laughs> <laughs> doesn't he know not to do that while you're recording? Dude. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something. He's leaving Friday for about 10 days to go like Arizona bike week. And literally this man, Day and night, like that's all he does. Oh, let me fix one thing, turn one wrench, and then he goes for a ride to make sure it's okay. And I'm like, seriously, at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, uh, Gator on the bike when he was in college. And oh, yeah. his dad didn't let him. So what he did was <laughs> he parked it in our friend's garage. And every morning he'd drive, take his car to his friend's place, oh, pull up the God. bike drive it around campus, go all around everywhere. And at night he'd park it back and jump in his car, go back home. And he went for a very long time without anyone knowing or his parents knowing that he had a bike. So we're going to leave the part about your husband just doing it, but we're going to take that part out about me. (laughs) I do the editing. So 
it doesn't really matter. The entire time I, I was working towards one goal. And that one goal was transitioning, or it's called cross-training, um, into OSI, which is the Office of Special Investigations. Wow. And it's a lot of big words. So it's so, it's the Air Force's FBI. Essentially. So let, so let me let me stop you right there, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I know you have a ton to talk about you, but you've given us like a super amount of information already, and I, I have a ton of questions. Um, number one, as you went through this. Where's your family in this whole in this whole thing, right? So I understand it's probably an easier pill for your husband to swallow, literally because he was in the same field and and kind of in that same direction, right? Mm -hmm. What I can't imagine what my mom would say, and I'll give you one example. Um, when you turn eighteen, I was born and raised here, be similar to you. And Gayer's, uh, he came here on a boat, but for the rest of us, we have to enlist when we're eighteen, right? So. Mm -hmm. In that, like my mom like started crying right then. She's like, well, what do you mean you have to like sign up? And enlist might be the wrong word, but you have to. Yeah, the service. Yeah. Right? yeah. So you yeah. have to just log in. It's like, okay, if we get into a situation where we need your help, you're going to be called, right? Yep. My mom saw that in the mail and she's like, throw this out. You don't need to do this. And I was like, no, no, you <laughs> legally have to, mom. And she's yes. like in tears, you know? So just off of that reaction and seeing my mom in that situation, what, what about your family, your parents, siblings, uncles, aunts, grandparents? What was their reaction? So um, when I started with the police career, you know what it is? It's faith, right? The letter came back. This is what Sami said, right? After that, there's no questions asked. You do what you have to to get there. Um, Did they know you were writing that letter? Mm -hmm. in considering it my dad that's the first thing he says and actually even now like i don't go my dad's always been like that you know no offense gator but that bald wise man at the top of the hill where you go you know like nope. the one of wisdom that's not yeah. our, that, that's there's no offense there that's a compliment <laughs> that's however not all bald for. men are like that Let's we all are well. yes yeah it, <laughs> no, you should have said gonna... unlike you gator most bald <laughs> well, men. Yeah. unlike you anyway so um I've stopped actually even now going to my dad and I just write my letters and my dad's like, oh, you don't need me anymore and I'm okay with it. So anyway, so my dad, so my entire family, it was just full on, full on support, right? Um, police Academy. So you go for the week and then you come home and then Sunday night, you, you know, kind of go again. And we had to wear khakis. So I had to get my khakis from baby gap. I was 80 pounds, you know, it was whatever. And every Sunday morning, lo and behold, my dad is ironing my khakis. Um, so it was that much support. My mom was making me food for the entire week because there was no accommodation. That was the only one they gave me, actually. Um, Do, does they, everyone else, everyone else bring their food or, or they provide food, but because you're vegetarian or you have dietary restrictions or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. So they made an exception for you to bring in food or is that typical? Nope. That was a full on exception. And so at the Academy, our, the cleaning crew, the chefs, everyone, I was so grateful for this that, you know, my mom sent this because they're all inmates. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the Academy is next to the prison. And the juvenile detention center, right? So there's literally one little fence, dinky little fence separating all of us. Wow. Yeah. Is that typical or is that just happens to be where you were training? I feel like it's all typical, like to group everyone together because you already have so many cops that are certified. So, you know, shit hits the fan. Got it. They're right there. <laughs> They're right there. And everyone's carrying at this point, except us. We had these like blue little <clears throat> pew pew fake guns, like. I don't know what the point was. I don't know if someone came where we were supposed to like throw it at them. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so yeah, so they made that accommodation. There was one, like the head of chef, he was a civilian every night in like the little fridge. He would leave me like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to make sure nobody knew like he, like, like he wasn't supposed to technically, but he did. So, you know, bless his heart. He was sweet. Um, where the hell was I? I well, cut you off. Way. 
I cut you off and asked if the food thing was typical. But you were talking about your father ironing it, the whole family thing, right? Yeah. So, so they everyone, were involved and engaged, it seems. Mm -hmm. And everyone is, and I think even with the military, it helped that Farth was already in, like big time. Got big it. Big so time. we get to a point where everybody's happy. You've gotten your blessings. Your parents are happy, which again, you made it sound like that's typical. But obviously in our community, that's not a it typical yeah. response. I don't think most people's parents, especially moms, would be uh, responding in the same way. You know, when you think of like India, right? You think of a cop or even going in India, it's like a havildar that you just gets bribed and like they're the most corrupt, right? Mm -hmm. When we were in India in 2016, my ba, grandmother literally made me bring my uniform to India to put it on and go for a ride along with their cops. Wow. That's the that's the level of pride. But I think it's it, it's it's actually so it's in our blood. It's generational. My dada, first doctor in Gujarat, right? Oxford University, John Hopkins Medical School. Like he again, oh, breaking right. glass ceilings. Right. Right. And man of pride. But he was went to he had his own political party. It was a peaceful political party, but went to jail so many times with Sardar, right? And it was just like so leading the way. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. And my mom kind of raised us, all four of us to be like low naughties, right? I, my, my Instagram handle is low naughty, right? Mm -hmm. Iron woman. So it just kind of, that's, we've just kind of continued that and I've continued that. So, um, yeah, pride, proud, all of it. So but it's in our blood. So you get to training. And mm -hmm. to try to lighten it up a little bit, you are what is what is your uh your height? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so the Air Force knows it as five foot. Five and I'm I say it as a joke, but now no, you no, get I know, there I know. and you're the shortest person out of these guys. Some guys are probably seven, but I'm amazing I'm um, imagining. And so how do you handle this so you're, you're it's impressive i i say it as a joke but it's pretty impressive especially even the next picture that we're going to show it, it's do they have boosters for the for the jets sorry you can edit that out there no i think you should leave it out in there because you sound like an idiot so let's <laughs> leave it because not air for all air force members fly i know i know i know i know <laughs> um so the funny thing is, you know what prepared me for that police academy? So there was this Asian, and I, I will never forget her. She was mean. She was my height. She was a cadre. And she paired me up. So our defense tactic class, she paired me up with the tallest guy in the entire class, 6'9". And... He would, he was easy, like, you know, the fake baton. He'd be like, oh, you know, he's small, fragile, whatnot. She came around one day and she's like, oh, hell no. And she like smacked the living crap out of me, like back of my calves. And I went down and she's like, stop handicapping her. Cause wow. out on the streets, nobody is going to. And so, yeah, I brought him down. I was like, I can do anything now. <laughs> and I did, right? Policing, you know, the beating, the getting beaten up, you know, all of that just kind of, I think it, hardens you any other <laughs> in all seriousness anything else where your height or you're very skinny or anything like that like these guys some of these guys i'm sure are jacked or really muscular that kind of stuff like anything impact you in that sense yeah i got beaten up a lot but but main thing i am damn good at my gun Oh, interesting. Because hmm. it was justified. Your Honor, I'm 88 pounds. This man, this man is like 185. I was scared for my life. So right? let's talk about that. What did, uh, were you, did you already go to like shooting ranges and that kind of stuff? And were you familiar with it? Or the first time you held it was, was when you were there? The first time I held it was when, when I was at, at the police academy. And, and uh, actually this is extra training right here. So what was it like the first time you fired it? What was the experience? I, I've gone once, um, and I'm not, I'm not a fan of, of guns or anything like that. I actually feel like they should strict up the gun laws and all that. 
But I did go in college, went to a shooting range. It was fun, but man, I had a headache and it was nowhere near as easy as it looks. I peed my pants the first time, literally. <laughs> I mean, that gun looks pretty big in that picture. I mean, you were probably much younger, obviously, but that's a Glock 40. Firing that gun must have been, uh, especially the first time. Yeah, I peed my pants, but then it got empowering because I'm because it's not the empowering power part of it where, oh, I have a gun and a badge, like you know, nothing can. But it's more of like. I have a gun and a badge where I can protect other people. And I sucked. I was terrible, terrible at shooting. Um, the more you do it, the, the, the more comfortable you get. And now, yeah, I mean, in the beginning of our marriage, Barth and I used to, for our anniversary, we would buy each other guns. And now we have a whole, you know, we're ready to go. Zombie apocalypse, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know. Anyone else from other countries? I mean, this is where Yogi and I kind of similar in that manner, where we both like the guns itself. We're just, you know, again, the the way everything is running outside, we just have concern about uh, the way they're handed out or stolen mm -hmm. or found, whatever you want to call it. However, people are getting them just doesn't make sense. Otherwise, I, I you give me any gun, I'd love to fire it and uh, have gone to many ranges. But uh, even though I'm on the, the left side, so. We talked about guns earlier. You brought up the fact of uh, your faith and writing to your uh, uh, guru and stuff. And so how did the military affect you? Because um, there's a again, every picture you sent me is very uh, powerful like this. You're in your uniform and you're doing your prayer. Uh, mm -hmm. Were you able to do that easily throughout the, your career? And, and one one additional aspect I want you to touch on, we just transitioned from guns to prayer, right? But so being from Sanatan Dharma, Hindu faith, naturally those are two opposite things, right? Like nonviolence yet doing this. So what is there a battle in your mind? So just touch upon faith in, in that aspect as well. Constantly. Um, but so here's the thing. Um, you have our within our community, right? You have a lot of business owners, liquor store owners, right? They sell it, but they still follow their faith, right? Um, that's kind of how I looked at it in this, you know, in that sense. Um, but here's the other thing. In order to retire from the FBI as a director, as the letter says, I gotta do this, right? At the end of the day, with every, whether it's practicing, whether it's actually, you know, apprehending someone or whatnot. Yeah, you better bet I am saying the Samir Mantra in my head, <laughs> right? Because next life, right? Yeah. Next life for, for this person or, you know, whatnot. So, um, I, you know how like Americans say, Jesus take the wheel? Yeah, Swami took the wheel the entire time as far as that goes. Um, as far as, the military. Um, so basic training was so a lot after basic training, it was free for all, right? The Air Force is very big on your four pillars. And the and one of the filler pillar fillers, one of the pillars that I obviously resonate to is the spiritual pillar, mm -hmm. right? And the Air Force is big on family, big on your whether it's spirituality, religiously, whether even if it isn't, they're big on it, right? Take care of yourself. First, and that is a big transition and throughout history for the Air Force. So, basic training for eight weeks. I lived off of peanut butter. Here's why: there were three three meals: Monday Monday night lasagna, Wednesday lunch black bean burgers, and then Sunday. Actually, that was the only day that I got food because I went to another building um, with grilled cheese and tomato soup. Those were the only meals that I actually ate and they were so random. Rest of it was just peanut butter and milk, which I absolutely hate. But um, so anyway, so the way you go in to, they're called chow halls, which is the cafeteria where you sit down to eat. The way you go in is very interesting because you're formed up in formation. So there's, they're called elements. So there are four columns, right? And it's four across. Um, 
and or, or sometimes five, but it goes from tallest to shortest. <laughs> but the first person in is normally the tallest, right? So by the time I got in, there was never any food left. No <laughs> so kidding. So I lived on peanut butter. Um, but I have to say one thing is, and this is like pivotal in defining for me what the Air Force meant, and it started here, was 60 girls, right? You're in a one big room full of 60 women, okay? Catty women, right? Mm Because we're trying to find our place in the world in a Mm male-dominant industry. And every night, we would get one protein bar. And every night, there was 60 protein bars, 59 protein bars under my pillow. Oh, wow. (laughs) And it started off off with one or two. I never, I still don't to this day know who started it. But that's just what it was. Um, Puja. As far as praying, so we showered at night. There was no showering in the morning. We all, it was just a thing. So, yeah, I, you know, I sat on my bed and I prayed and I did what I had to. Um, I had my Mara with me, you know, underneath all the time. So, yeah, that was, I mean, the Air Force is very accommodating. Do you think because of these obstacles that you went through to maintain your faith, it made you stronger? It, within your faith coming out on the other side? Oh, hell yeah. Do you want to know why? Every base that I have been or been stationed, there is no man there. There is no temple. There is none of that, right? You have to do it on your own. And especially after kids, you most definitely have to. But because... that's, that's, that's almost more like for someone like me, like, you know, they say like, you know, you are your company or Jeo Sung Yeo Dung, right? Mm-hmm. That like, They have my picture in the dictionary when they came up with that phrase, you know, a hundred years ago or a thousand (laughs) years ago, whatever it was, right? That, like, I will just blend into the crowd I'm in. So I know those limits and I know I need to hang out with the right folks because then I will mimic that. If I get into the wrong crowd today, you know, I know in the right environment around the wrong people, I could potentially go off and Mm -hmm. maybe break something that I feel is very important to me and, and everything and regret it after but yeah it's it's commendable to me that like you're in that environment and you still don't crack like what you just said makes me think more that like oh i would probably crack completely in that situation if i wasn't in touch you know what don't listen i'm and you can say you can put this on or not it's it's totally up to you i've cracked i've 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 tried the drinking i've tried it all Right? right, I have, and I've tried it in these positions. It's as just have, not me. As have both of us in here, right? Right, like yeah. Because here's here here's the here's the best thing about and again you can put this on, about like our religion, right? We're not forced. You make the decision on your own. Correct. And my parents have always said that too. Make the decision on your own. We'll give you. Here's the tools. Whether you use them or not, it's up to you, right? So, yeah, no, I, I have. I absolutely 100% have. However, at the end of the day, it's not it's not my journey. It's not my path. It's not where I want to go. So, and it makes you stronger when you come out the other end. I, I found that oh, like, absolutely. when you do fall and you come back, for me personally, it's always made me stronger. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and I've been able to introspect and recognize that, like, all right, I was around – this scenario, this situation, which is what caused me to do this. I personally don't believe in it. I was just weak, you know, and it helped me avoid those situations. So I, so here's the thing. I don't believe that I was weak. I think I needed to try those things to come out stronger. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason, right? Everything is his will, his mercy. Actually, that was the first tattoo I got out of EMT. What does Um, it say? It's in Morse code and it says Murji. Oh, I was wow. just gonna say it looks like Morse code. <laughs> yeah. So for, for me, like I, I strongly believe in that this is his doing. Whether it's this path, that path, it's it's all his. Because at the end of the day, when you come back, you come back exactly. You come back stronger. So, um, yeah. Nice. So we talked about uh, a lot of stuff about you being very tough, 
which is pretty obvious from being a police officer for six, seven years to then going into the Air Force, um, which, you know, even though you were a maintenance analyst or whatnot, it's still the training and everything that went behind it makes you very tough. Mm -hmm. But there is another side of you that we want to talk about. And this picture is our favorite picture. Yogi loves it. I love it. This is an awesome picture. Um, there's a side of you that is not so tough. Yeah. Right. And I know on in your Instagram, uh, you have other pictures of you uh, in Indian dress, beautiful pictures and stuff. And so tell us how you turn off that toughness. I don't. What do you want to say about this picture? Um, this picture is very, very, it's a defining moment in my life. Um, because I think it helps me realize even when, especially when I need the most, um, of changing the path, paving the way, um, and inspiring, right? Uh, last year or in September when at Robbinsville, we did the whole military appreciation. Mm -hmm. I hate wearing my my blues, my blues uniform. It's not because of the pride or anything. It's, it's so uncomfortable, right? You can't eat right. You can't sit in certain, like you have to, like it's, I wanted Paprin Lord, which, you know, Gayor brought me, but it sucked because I'm like, let me like eat like, like it was just because you, that's why I hate it, right? Yeah, this, this one. This one. Yep. Um, but actually, it didn't matter what I was wearing or the how uncomfortable it was when I saw all these little kids, right? All these little, you know, the youth, especially the female youth, um, wanting to take photos or wanting to know the journey or want taking my number. And some of them still do reach out, I'm still guiding some of them to join, right? In the process and don't get played and kind of a thing. Or their mothers draft. This is the main thing. Their mothers, right? Older, like my mom's generation, or you know, right in the middle, dragging their kids, like, hey, I want you to meet her, find some inspiration. That is a big deal. Like, forget yeah. me even serving, that's what makes it worth it. And that's kind of what this photo is. So, you know, we have people like Martin Luther King, Gandhi, or, you know, that are, have these big shoes and we're told to build these big shoes and whatnot. I have a different saying. I don't think we need to fill the shoes of, you know, MLK or Gandhi because a woman's heels already allow us to stand tall. And I think that is like, this is that, this is that for me. And I, you know, it's not, I'm not being cocky or anything, but this is my pride right here because I can be both. I can do both. Yeah. No, I mean, this, so this good. is a powerful picture. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if you realize it when you took it. I mean, this is, uh, I did. That was the intent. It's a really nice picture and uh, hopefully we'll be able to share this with a lot of other people. So this actually is inspired by a series where, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but I can always send you guys a link if you guys want to link it. But I forgot his name, but he's a famous photographer in the military world where he takes photos of the same concept, right? But while they're looking through the mirror, it's the PTSD of veterans. I've it's seen that, yeah. the anxiety and the trauma or losing, like, you know what I mean? So that's what it reflects. I had to spin it. Hmm. It's powerful. It's definitely powerful. And without going too deep into it, did you ever have PTSD? Oh, yeah, I do right now. Actually, I, I do. Um, I have PTSD, uh, anxiety, all of it. I hate fireworks. That Like, there, there's a lot. And I am actually getting treated for it. I do think it's important that, or not just you, anybody speaks about it. Because that's one of the things, and I've mentioned this in prior podcasts. It's like, it's almost one of those things that I feel isn't prevented it isn't prevented or isn't addressed enough as much as your physical body is right we had uh, uh jamin on right mm -hmm. and he basically talked about how the resources are there but you just need to reach out you know and yeah. the signs would be there but you need to address it but that reaching out itself is such a hard thing for a lot of people to do you know 
in general, irrespective of what culture you're from. And then in on honesty, in our culture, it's even that much harder, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think it is impressive um, for you, number one, to talk about it openly. But, you know, for those who, who would need help, it's like, it's okay. You know, it's just like having yeah. the flu or anything else that you might have that you have to, you take a pill, your thyroid is, you know, off yeah. and you need to take a pill for it. It's very similar in nature, you know, so it's it okay is. to talk and- about it. Well, right. And, and okay, good. Because then I do want to say like, so when all when I was transitioning out, when, when all this happened, I, I wrote a letter. As again, letters are my thing. I have a big binder, like he's my guiding light, right? I wrote a suicide letter. I wrote a suicide letter two months on my eyes, right? Like to spiritual leader. I, I, I did that because that's where I was in life. Um, you know, I, the response was just phenomenal, right? We're holding your hand, just hold tighter. And wow. that is like, that is just like, I have goosebumps just even thinking about that letter, but it wasn't anything, you know, do pray more, you know, kind of go to, go to the temple, go to Monday. Like it wasn't any of that. None of it. It wasn't follow your names. I don't know what that is in English. I'm going to be honest, but you know, follow your names, follow your path, follow the religion, be ortho. None of it. I'm holding your hand. Just hold that tighter. That's it. And I think that's where that was my, I need, I, I need to call and I need to make the appointment and I need to go in and I need to do what the steps are to make it better for me. And so, yeah, it's. Yeah. He's guided you all the way through. It looks like from day one. Yeah. Day one. It, it, It definitely is an inspiration. Honestly, like hearing you, and every phase of life that you went through, I, I bet you most people haven't experienced one of those phases in their entire lives, right? And you've been through so many ups and downs and ups and downs, yet you're doing things that are definitely breaking barriers. So so hats off to you. Definitely, definitely very, very impressed. I want to I want you to revise that statement. Okay. Uh-oh. And this is not off air, this is on air. <laughs> here's why yes i've had my ups and downs and yes i've experienced whatever i needed to experience right it in comparison to anyone else you can't compare the two in the sense of we all go through our struggle we all go through our battles mine are not any more than anyone else's right cancer Breast cancer isn't any better than leukemia. It's still cancer, right? right. At the end of the day. So it, whether someone has been through what I've been through or not, I'm sure they have their own journey. And I'm sure it is just as pivoting and just as defining, right? So change that. Change that perspective. Agreed. Um, but I will Leave challenge that in you. there. I will <laughs> challenge you on this. That okay. it, it definitely is unique. So I, I know you're, um, I, and I agree with you. I, I guess not to try to disagree with it. I agree with it. Everyone has their ups and downs. We all have, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but this inspiration that can be taken from anyone, anyone and all of those folks, including you, right? I guess is I guess yes. is what I'm trying to say. And many people might hesitate in sharing their story. So hats off to you for for sharing it as well, because I, I know that takes that. a lot. Um, Thanks for the do. platform, man. And your story doesn't end there yet. We still have one more thing to really talk about, which is what we want to talk about what you're doing in life now, which is this. This yes. is pretty impressive stuff. I added your logo in the middle, Jim. I know you hadn't initially sent that to me, but um, and you sent me a lot of other pictures. I tried to grab the, the best ones. Um, mm-hmm. And then in a second, I want to ask about the one on the, uh, I'm hoping it's on your right, which says Carter. Yep. Um, because if you still have that, I would love to have that. So wait, uh, I'll pay. For what it, is this? What is this? Explain it. Give us the rundown. Okay, so this kind of <laughs> relates to another business. So my husband has makes live edge tables, like twenty foot tables. He gets these slats from Costa Rica. He does resin, right? You've you've seen like the river, yeah. At the top so, two right ones um or similar yeah yeah so actually the third photo that coffee table is actually my coffee table but uh, essentially something like that um i'm actually sitting on it anyways um so started off in the so he's been doing this for a while 
And right around when COVID hit, I was mostly home. Um, daycare on base was shut down a lot. So I had, I was home, you know, with my kiddo and I was bored and I am not the type to just sit around. Like I need to be doing something. I don't sleep. Um, except so, so yeah, so he was like getting rid of like these like slab, you know, leftover pieces. And I was like, bro, these are too beautiful. I need to do something with it. So it kind of inspired me. I kind of got into this and then it turned into, okay. So, um, so that's where this kind of started It became my stress relief. And then I just, I just became really good at it. So okay, mm -hmm. what you're talking about, um, the Carter, that was actually someone was separating from the air force. And those are the coins that she, she was, that she earned. Um, and I resin those. It's um, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, so where, do we get, where do we get this? I have a website. Um, I, I'm sure you will link it below. Um, and yeah, I ship worldwide. Uh, and then I'll also add the bigger tables. Um, I just realized the VP can stand for very proxy and Vaishali Patel. Yeah, only certain people get that. Smart people, bald people. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that Oops. that's not yeah. That's not. But yeah, very. It, it was because eventually one day, uh, I want to get into an art gallery, and and I want it to be by Shelly Patel Designs. No, it's pretty awesome, and uh, we'll definitely link it. We'll promote it and uh, do everything we can. Yogi will buy two or three tables, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I'm looking actually at your basement and I'm like, man, I would love to put like a barn door, live edge barn door back there. Like there. Oh, damn. Look at that. So my wife, I don't think she listens to the podcast, but uh, I'm sure her friends are going to tell her about this and she's going to be reaching out to epoxy door that slides with, and you can make it clear, put a light on the other end of it. That mm -hmm. sounds really expensive. Mm-hmm. Then she can afford to do the podcast with no, us. No, no, we can mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. Uh, say that this was actually a lot more interesting than we initially thought. I knew enough about you to know that it was going to be interesting. Um, but so much more has come out of what you have accomplished, um, what you've been through, and, you know, that you still have so much more to do. So, I mean, it's not the end of the journey even though you've left uh technically the air force but you're still working uh with them and you still have a lot of ideas i know you're looking for a, a job and things like that but even till to the today what you've accomplished is pr you know i know you try to say that everybody goes through similar things mm -hmm. i don't think i know another person that's probably accomplished as much in the same amount of time that you have, right? I, I tell you, the two idiots in front of you have definitely not accomplished anywhere near <laughs> what you have, right? I mean, this is why me and him do this is because we've done nothing else in life. And so we have to resort to this. But um, what you've done is very impressive, obviously, <clears throat> helping our country. Um, and so not only us, but I'm sure everybody that's watching um, appreciates everything you've done. And with that, we want to say thank you.